to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested and falsely sentenced to death. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way, sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with his blood he shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to his cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And his blood is our ticket. Our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now, there's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. Coming to you today. Hope everyone had a good weekend. Gonna talk out loud a little bit, and then I'm gonna read some scripture at the end of this and hope it'll be a blessing to you. We're a group of Bible-believing Christians. We rightly divide the word of truth. We're looking forward to what? The rapture, the soon return of our king. Uh, we know we're in the church age in time. Well, it's, it's coming to an end. We don't know when. It could be several years. It could be months. So we just keep looking up. You know, we're looking forward to, to going home. Uh, pay attention to the gospel message at the beginning, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus died, buried, and rose from the dead. He did that because he loves you to die for your sins. So you have to believe that with your heart. Call out to the Lord, be saved, not of works, lest any man can boast. You know, the Super Bowl happened yesterday in, here in America. And at the halftime event was Rihanna, and uh, I guess she was pregnant. And in her second term, most people, I don't know if you know that or not, but obviously she's a woman worth billions and um, follows Satan. Wearing the red and white certainly wasn't, wasn't something I enjoyed. Um, I couldn't even look at it, really. You know, we, we see the, the flying objects over North America being shot down, Alaska, Canada, United States. They call them un unidentified flying objects weather balloons, spy balloons, whatever they are. You know, things are revving up. Things are things are, are revving up. The lightning strike in Rio uh, de Janeiro, you know, definitely a graven image. I think a strike from God, amen. I think we'll continue to see more and more things that shock us a little bit. Uh, we as Christians shouldn't be quite as shocked as the rest of the world who have no idea what's going on as they literally have no discernment of the times that we live in. 2 Peter 3.8 tells us as Christians that we're not, you know, we, we certainly can discern the times and the seasons. And we know because the Lord, Holy Spirit's in us. As the world continues to move and press, you know, the, the lost world, either one has no clue or, or they're a part of the dark side and they look forward to the tribulation and the time of the Antichrist who will come. But we as Christians, we live in a world that's against us. We live in a world that's hostile. We live in a world that, well, is a little less than maybe what we'd like it to be. And so we're going to look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 1. For I would that ye know what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. Now, I find that interesting. That's the church age we're in. Mentioned that's, of course, the church at that location at the time. Great, we see the word great conflict in there. And that's what we have going on as a Christian. We're in conflict with the world. We're, we're opposite of it. Verse 2, that 
their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and the Father and of Christ. So there's your Trinity. The, we have the assurance of understanding, we have the, and, and we have that through Jesus Christ, through, the, through our relationship, through the Holy Spirit, and we're being knit together in love, comforted. So even though we're in a traumatic, turbulent storm, as you might call it in your life, as things come at you, you have that. Verse 3, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So that's in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 4, in this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. So you got to watch out for apostate teachers of wrong doctrine. You call them uh, wolves in sheep clothing. You can call them politicians. You can call them pastors, preachers that want to merchandise you, make money from you. Verse 5, For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the Spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ Jesus. Are you steadfast in your faith in these last times? Verse 6, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Verse 7, Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Give thanks that we have Jesus in our life and the Holy Spirit and get close to him. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Philosophy and science are counter to God. We know that. Tradition of man is pagan, is idol worship, is the, the ball set up that we saw back in the Old Testament of the Bible where and priests and, and Nimrods and Samaramis and Tammuz, that Babylonian system, the rudiments of the world. Verse 9, for in him, this be Christ, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So, you know, what we see here is Christ that is is the one in, in all the believers and every unsaved person, well, they lack that. They have an empty space in their heart and their and their lives. Verse 10, and ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. So Jesus Christ is God. He's the head of all principality and power. And we, and we have fullness because he dwells within us and, and then makes us complete. So, you know, we're saints. We're a royal priesthood. We, our faith is rooted in, in, in a, on a solid rock that we stand. And all other ground is sinking sand. And this world is sinking fast. So prayers, leave them below. Subscribe, thumbs up. You know, we, we're a group of Bible believing Christians in these end times that going through it together. I love you. I love you guys. I've I've always enjoyed this channel. It's it's one of the things I that I, I hold dear to my heart. Uh, certainly the Bible is the most important thing. It's the word, amen. Hold on to that, hold it in your heart, memorize verses, pray, supplicate for others. We we all need it. Anyway, God bless and have a great, great day.